Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. This is a real quick one. I call it quick performance tips for Adobe Premiere Pro. So the last time my daughter Simone was in my studio, she reminded me of these great performance tips that she really has to deal with all the time. She's always doing long form. So a couple hour videos, uh, you know, hundreds if not thousands of clips. And these settings really do make sense for long form, for sure. Absolutely. Turning these things off make a difference. They could actually make a difference in, in uh, smaller uh, projects too. So try them out. Let's go have a look. So the first thing is in this uh, wrench menu here is to turn off waveforms. These waveforms here uh, require computing power. And you might think, well, once they draw once, then that's it. But as Simone says, she turns them off when you don't need them. Because if they're just sitting there, especially if you're working on the, the picture edit and you don't really need them to either alert you of where a cut is, then shutting them off for a giant timeline makes all the difference. So that's in the wrench menu here. And you can turn off show audio waveforms. So they're still there, you can still edit them, you just can't see what the picture looks like. So that's the first one. The next one is to turn off show through edits. Now I'm gonna leave this on while I show you what a through edit is, um, and that's this right here. That is a through little bow tie thing, is telling you that there's a cut at that point between the two clips, but there are no frames missing. That's actually the same clip just cut at one spot without an edit. So there's there's no need for that, that edit to be there unless you you need it. You can join that through edit by right clicking and join through edits. You can select it and just delete it. But if you need it there, but you don't need to see the through edit, then you can turn that off. It disappears, but you, you still have that through edit there. Every time Premiere Pro has to check all of those clips to show you that little symbol, that takes power. All right, next up is hide duplicate frames. So right now it's, it's turned on duplicate frames and you can see that in some of these frames here that I purposely um, edited and overlapped. Oh, there they are. You can even see them out here, that, that little blue or purple line between there. So that is indicating that many of these, you can see that jump right there and maybe you want that, but it takes time for Premiere Pro to calculate that. And it ends here because those frames are unique, those frames are unique, and those inside the area are repeated. So again, back to the wrench, turn off, show duplicate frames, and that turns off. And that can make a giant difference when you've got long form. Okay, now that's all the, the, uh, the tips for working with the timeline but we can still turn down the resolution. And, and this has less to do, uh, you know, chances are if you're working long form like my daughter, you're working with something low res already like ProRes, ProRes LT. Um, and, you know, it's not gonna make a significant difference. Those, those are, are low quality. But if you do have some performance problems over in the program monitor, you can take this from full to half or quarter resolution and you're going to get better performance. And it your output is still going to be fine. It's just the playback uh, will have one quarter of the resolution. So it's a quarter of the calculations that Premiere Pro has to do to draw those frames on the screen. You'll get even further down and you'll see that here, there's eighth and a sixteenth if you have higher frame sizes. So if you do have two and 4K, you could turn that down. But if you're working with two or 4K or 6K or higher, you should be uh, working on a proxy workflow. And I've got a link at the end uh, to take you to the proxy workflow, which uh, makes all the difference in the world. You can actually generate and replace and relink and uh, reassociate and create new proxies. Adobe's proxy workflow is pretty darn good. But I'm gonna take this back up to full because that's fine for me. 
But there's another one in here that if you accidentally turn this on because you thought you needed it, this will slow down every project. Doesn't matter if it's one minute long or an hour long. In the wrench, in the program monitor, it's this guy right here, high quality playback. And you'll see things look good, especially um, essential graphics, Mogert titles will look gorgeous, but it takes a toll on your system to play this back if you've got large multi uh, tracks and a lot of, of high res graphics and things. So you do not need that on. It's off by default but you might have accidentally turned that on and uh, thought you needed it. And then when you load a bigger project, oh boy, uh, you could have problems. And the last one has to do with, with the performance with the GPU. And the only reason I'm mentioning this one is because I find some people have had it off and it's in the file menu, project settings, general, and depending on your hardware, you may or may not have some of these choices. I'm using um, an NVIDIA um, RTX 5000. It's a smoking fast card on my Dell 7740. And it is uh, CUDA, it uses CUDA. I could also use OpenCL. Software only means that you're only using the software and not the GPU. And not everybody has a fast enough GPU and, and the GPU doesn't speed everything up, but it speeds up enough things like accelerated effects and recently uh, decoding uh, video. So you'll, you might see a, uh, anywhere from a slight difference to a huge difference. But I'll caution you, don't worry about that yellow line, yellow line, red line, th those kinds of things. Too many people get really hung up because if they come from Final Cut um, or Avid and it's red, that's a problem. The red and yellow is just a guess. And if you think I'm guessing, I'm not. I worked for Adobe for 17 and a half years and I had to tell customers over and over and over again. Uh, the engineers actually regret choosing yellow and red uh, because they are an estimation but they can alert you to maybe your GPU is off. And, and uh, I was surprised when I was talking to someone about performance and I asked them just to go check it. And I thought for sure, because it's on by default, ah, they've got it on. They didn't have it on. They never had it on. And they didn't even know the benefit of that. So it's worth uh, turning on. You do need a supported GPU. The last thing I'll say about, about that is uh, the compatibility uh, report, so in the help menu system compatibility report, I've got no conflicts here. Um, Adobe tries to weed out all the problem cards and drivers. So you might get a warning that your GPU is not supported. It doesn't mean it won't work. You can continue to use it. In fact, in the preferences, you can turn this these warnings off and just keep working. But it doesn't mean if you got a really, really old, very underpowered uh, card with l very little video memory that it will do uh, a good job for you. I'm just trying to alert you to the fact that you should look in there and you should turn it on. And if you're on Mac and you'll see metal in there, you turn that on, you're on Windows uh, and you, you might have NVIDIA or something else and just turn it on, it doesn't hurt. Hey. Uh, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us some more? Then go to the Video Revealed store. You can get there by going to videorevealed.com slash shop. Link is in the description. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to keep you abreast of all the ways that you can make Premiere Pro work a little bit better.